All right, those of y'all at home, if you would pause the video and copy that down. So, I'm hopeful that you're feeling pretty good about stoichiometry, all right? Uh, maybe you're not a pro at it, but uh, we spent two days lecturing, a computer day, so that was three class days plus a three-day weekend, um, and since you're so responsible, you're probably doing pretty good at the steps. If that's not true, then today, while we're going through the exact same steps, because today's lesson is incredibly similar in terms of what we're going to do, um... Make sure you speak up louder, all right? Don't set yourself up for failure because you won't talk. So let me know how I can help. Now, today and tomorrow's lecture are teeny tiny tweaks on the stoichiometry. The good news is, is that none of the math changes. Today's topic and tomorrow's topic is just a different conclusion that can be drawn from a slightly different type of problem. You probably remember that um, last week, all of our stoichiometry problems um, gave one of the reactants in excess. It means that one of your starting items was given in a very certain amount, while the other one had just said, you have as much as you need. But that's not real life, all right? I'll never send you to the lab in the back and give you an infinite amount of something. All right. Instead, there's specific amounts of everything. And then you dump them together and the reaction runs. But not only does the reaction run, it stops. The only reason a reaction would stop running is if you run out of one of the ingredients, is if you run out of one of the reactants. And that reactant is the limiting reactant, the one that stops the reaction. And that's what I want to show you today. A limiting reactant problem is only different than the other problems we've done is that instead of giving you one starting amount that you then run a grid on, it'll give you two starting amounts. Each of those amounts will get its own grid and you'll get two theoretical yields at the end, so it's more work, but you'll pick the smaller number. Whichever grid gives you the smaller number will indicate the limiting reaction. Let's see if you kept up with what I just said. We're going to do a little logic exercise. Um, you do not need to write this down. I thought it'd be fun if we made some cake together. Are you in a cake mood? It's fake cake, so it'll taste more. Don't shake your head. Are you in a destroy the periodic table mood? It's gone. Anyway, um, we're going to make a cake. And whoops, this, this is how I make cake. That's a weird angle for my people. It's better, I think. Now, my cake is just made up of two flour, three eggs, and four sugars, which if you go and throw that in a bowl together at home and bake it, it'll taste terrible. But, um, let's pretend that these are the reactants, and when you mix them together, you get this one product. Now, I'm going to give you a tray of ingredients. This is an individual thing, so don't, no talky talky. Just think about this tray of ingredients. I want to know how many cakes? How many? Two. Do you see how I gave you twice as much of everything you need? The reaction has enough to run two times. Let's do it again. New tray, same thing. No talk, just think. How many? Two. Two. Didn't I give you a ton of stuff though? 
You know how much chickens have to love each other to make that many eggs? That's correct. The answer is still only two. Even though I gave you a ton of flour and a ton of eggs, the sugar's the limiting reactant. You will run out of sugar after two cakes are made. And then it doesn't matter that you have so much excess of all the other ingredients. Do you understand the point? Now, when we look at this in a chemistry question, it looks a little different because you have to run grids to get the answers, but you're just looking for which reactant makes less cake. That'll be our limiter. Let's check it out. Go ahead and uh, copy down just the reaction. You don't need to copy down the question, just that bolded reaction. I'll write it for you all. The reaction says that silicon dioxide reacts with two carbons to produce silicon and two carbon monoxides. So there's our reaction. But then it gives you starting amounts of both. Go ahead and do what I do. You'll notice that it gives us 4.5 moles of him alongside 3.5 moles of him. And it wants to know what's the limiting reactant. Who are you going to run out of first? Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking him. There's less of him. It's the smaller number. It doesn't work like that. I mean, maybe you have a 50% chance it looks like here. But I'll prove to you by the end of the day that you cannot go off of those starting numbers to draw your conclusion with certainty. All right, because this isn't cake making. These are chemicals that you're unaware of. And it might take a whole lot of one of the reactants to make the reaction run once and not a lot of the other. And the stoichiometry will reflect that. So we don't make assumptions based off the given numbers. Instead, each one gets a grid. So, oh, seriously? So, start setting this up for me. First, I got 4.5 moles of the SiO2. That'll be one of my starting items. I'm getting my grids going. So with space, the other one will be 3.5 moles of carbon. Now, I want to point out something really important. The way that this question is worded, it doesn't dictate what units you have to convert to, nor does it give you... <laughs> nor does it give you um, which compound you have to pick. Some of the problems on Canvas are going to do the same thing. It's very vague. It just gives you a setup and it says, what's the limiting reactant? If the question doesn't pick units and or doesn't pick a product for you, then you get to pick. You can pick either product. Like, this isn't making cake. This is making cake and ice cream. So you would just pick either the cake or the ice cream to convert your given into. Again, it doesn't give you units that you have to go to either. So if we can pick any units to convert to, considering stoichiometry, what units should we pick? Always moles, right? Moles is less steps. So if it doesn't say you have to go to grams or you have to go to atoms, then go to moles. The whole trick, if you're sitting there thinking, what do you mean I can pick? The trick here is, is that if you get to pick your own units and your own compound, just make sure that this grid that you're about to do, that both grids go to the same one. As long as both grids are converting to the same, 
units and product, then you'll have comparable answers. Hey, check it out. Do we have good news or bad news in regard to the given? Good news. Have your steps in front of you if you're still weak at this. All right. But if we already have moles, we don't have to convert our given to moles. It's already there. So we can go straight to step two. Once I have moles of my given, what do we convert to next? Moles again, right? You go to moles of whatever it's asking about. But remember, it didn't tell us what we have to go to. We get to pick either product. What do y'all want to do, the silicon or the CO? The CO, I heard. Let's go to the CO. But the trick is, whichever one you do pick, both grids need to go to it. So again, we already have moles of our given. The next step is to go to moles of the unknown compound. Now, sometimes we have to do step three and then go to a different unit. But again, it didn't dictate a unit. So moles to moles, the shortest type of problem, will work here. Drag your diagonals. All right, so this diagonal is moles of SiO2. This diagonal is moles of carbon. Hey, check it out. Moles is over moles. Where do the numbers come from when that happens? The coefficients. It's written in step two. And there's our balanced equation. So the coefficient for CO is two. The coefficient for SiO2 is one. Let's run that top grid. You probably don't need a calculator. 4.5 times two divided by one. The top grid can make nine cakes. Hey, check it out. Moles over moles, automatically coefficients, not the conversion factors. Again, the mole of carbon dioxide, or the, I'm sorry, the coefficient is two. And the coefficient of carbon is also two. Three point five times two divided by two. Which number do we care about in regard to limiting reactant? The smaller one. The smaller number will indicate the limiting reactant. In this case, three point five. Therefore, the limiting reactant is carbon. Now, this doesn't do a good point, uh, a good job at proving my point, rather, of not judging off these starting numbers, because this was the smaller number, and it was ultimately the limiting reactant. But, I mean, sometimes that works. It's just not the way to do it. So let's do one more problem and maybe prove it. Questions so far about this idea? Yeah. I mean, you should. It would be better. But, I mean, it depends on the question. Like if the answer choices are just numbers, then whatever saves you time. All right, y'all. This will be our last problem of the day. I will show you people at home. If you're at home, go ahead and copy down the reaction. You should copy the reaction only for now.
It says we've got one pentane is what that is, reacting with eight oxygens to produce five carbon dioxides and six waters. Again, you'll notice we have specific amounts of each of my reactants. But you'll also notice, look at the question. Do you see how this is way different than the first one? It's much more specific. Instead of just saying, what's the limiting reactant? Go figure it out however you want to. It specifically says how many liters of this product. So it doesn't make it any harder. It just means that both of your grids, it's already been dictated what you need to convert to. So let's take a look at those numbers. The first number it gives me is 294.6 grams of oxygen. There's one of the givens. The other reactant has a starting amount of 238.7 grams of the C5H12. We're going to draw a bunch of cards on this one. All right, let's get some help filling this fun guy in. Let's just focus on the top grid only. Here we go. Let's go over to cluster six and talk to seat four. That's over here. Hey, six, four. Hey, look at what it gave me. What should I convert to first? Of what? Um, so Not yet. So I have grams of my starting substance. Moles of the starting substance. So we're going to first convert to moles of the starting substance because you must start with moles. That's step one. Now you'll notice we're skipping those steps, right? Because if you look at the question, it didn't give you moles and it's not asking for moles. So you should do everything on your cheat sheet. All right. Hey, so now I have moles of my given. Let's go over to cluster four. Not again. Cluster four, seat four. Hey, four, four. Um, hey, once you have moles of the given, what do you always go to next? Moles of the unknown. It's moles again, but of the other substance. And in this case, it dictates it. It's got to be the CO2. Sometimes we get to stop there. Let's see if uh, somebody thinks we get to stop there on this one. Go to cluster three and talk to seat two. Hey, three, two, we have moles of the unknown. Should we convert to something different? What? Yeah, it specifically says you must find the limiting reactant using liters this time. So there's every step of the conversion. Drag all your diagonals. So drag and drag and drag. Hey, check it out. Moles is over grams. With that in mind, go over to cluster one, C one. Hey, one one. What do you think should go in? That square. Perfect. It's a great way to say it. She said 16 times 2. All right? Because she knows that if it's not moles over moles, then we use the conversion factors. All right? Those guys right there. So it's one mole, PT grams, but there's two oxygens. One mole over PT grams. Hey, look, moles is over moles, considering that. Go to cluster five, talk to seat one, Aspen. Hey, Aspen, what do you think should go in this square? Two 
mole over mole. So think about where the numbers come from. The coefficient. So what is the coefficient of oxygen here? Big number in front of the substance. Did she say eight? I guess. Oh, sorry. I didn't know if we were still waiting. Yes, eight. And uh, because that is the coefficient from the balanced equation at the beginning, right? But for CO2, you can see that it's five. All right. And then in my last set, we've got liters over moles. Cluster three. C5, hey, 35. What do you think should go in that square? 22.4, because we're back to our conversion factors. 22.4 liters is equal to one mole. And hooray, one of the grids is done. Go ahead and run it. Keep in mind that you should put parentheses there if you're running it as a singular function. Would anybody like to share their theoretical yield? You can just say it. It's exactly what I get. I get 128.9 liters of carbon dioxide for the top grid. If you ran that grid and got a different answer, it's because you did not use these orange parentheses correctly. All right? You've got to do it. But we still don't know what the limiting reactant is or how much it's going to make overall because we haven't analyzed the other reactant. I'm going to give you like a four-minute head start on these. See how far you can get on the other grid. Now, remember the trick convert this into the exact same units as the top grid, liters of CO2. Call me over if you get stuck. Thank you. 
Here, I'll talk to a shoulder buddy instead of the. If you if you think. Compare your work with someone next to you. Both of you will learn better like that. Do I? All right, y'all, let's see how we did. Just stop me if you disagree with any part of my work. Um, all right, here we go. It gave me grams of the given. That's not okay. I must start with moles of the given. Once you have moles of the given, you always then go to moles of what you're going to find which again has to be the exact same substance from the other grid. In this case, it was dictated at the beginning anyway. Once you have moles of what you're studying, then you can go to any units, and this says we must go to due to the nature of the question. Drag all the diagonals. It's not moles over moles, so I use my conversion factors of one over periodic table. This needs to be the molar mass of pentane, so carbon five times, hydrogen 12 times. I think you get 72.15. This is moles over moles coefficients for the CO2 if you look at the problem. It's five for the pentane. There is no coefficient, so it's a one. Do not put your stuff away. We still have to draw a conclusion. It's not moles over moles. Therefore, back to conversion factors, 22.4 over one, based on liters and moles. When I run that grid, I get a final answer of 370.5 liters of carbon dioxide. But we have still not answered the question. The question wants to know how many liters will it make? Well, it's not going to make both of those. Which one will it make? The smaller number. The amount that will be made is only this number here. This number down here is impossible. 
I mean, it's the theoretical amount from the C5H12. That's why we call it a theoretical yield. But only the smaller number of cakes can happen. Therefore, oxygen is the limiting reactant, even though this question didn't actually ask for that, uh, that answer. But yes, oxygen is the limiting reactant because he led the grid that gave you the smaller yield. Hey, look, do you see how you couldn't have gone off the starting amounts? If you look at the starting amounts, this is the lesser starting amount, but it spit out more product. You have to do the stoichiometry.